Hi, welcome to the Intro to Fiction Writing series. Today's video is all about characters. Characters are the beings that live in the world of your story. This can include most anything you can tell a story about. People, plants, animals, robots, aliens, ghosts, imaginary creatures, household objects like talking toys or teapots, even places. When developing characters, there are three things we want to think about. One, their role in the story. Two, all the details that make them individuals, mind, body, and soul. And three, the backstory. Like I discussed in my video about names, I'll advise you to avoid using real people in your fiction. You wouldn't want people to make stories up about you without your permission, and there are rules about doing that. So instead, use real people to inspire you, but develop characters that are all your own. How do you start? We'll begin with roles, because each character has a role to play in your story, and those roles can help you figure out how much detail and backstory you need. Think of a play or a movie or a TV show. There are the leading roles who get the most lines. Then there are supporting roles who get fewer lines, and then there are background roles who may not get lines at all, like the poor kid dressed up as a tree in the Christmas pageant for school. The same holds true for stories. The protagonist is the lead, the one facing the big challenge that the story is all about. They get the most lines, they show up in the most scenes, they are the star. So the protagonist is going to be the character you spend the most time with because the story is built around them. For example, in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, this is Alice. In The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling, this is Mowgli. In Winnie the Pooh by A. A. Milne, this is Pooh. What other roles do we have? Many stories also feature an antagonist, which is a person who gets in the way of the protagonist achieving their goals. In adventure stories and fairy tales, this tends to be the villain. For example, the Queen of Hearts for Alice and Shere Khan for Mowgli. It could also be a rival or nemesis like Professor Moriarty for Sherlock Holmes in the stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. There may even be several antagonists, each representing part of the struggle that the main character has to overcome. Secondary characters and background characters make up the remaining roles. These are the friends, family, and acquaintances of your main character, as well as other characters who live in the world of your story. In Wonderland, that's all those memorable characters like the White Rabbit, the Hatter, the Cheshire Cat, the Caterpillar, the Dormouse, and more. Many secondary characters are archetypes, which means that they have a common role or personality. For example, you could have a mentor character that guides your main character and helps them to grow. Think of Merlin for King Arthur. In questing stories, there may be a band of traveling companions that the main character meets and befriends, like the Cowardly Lion, the Tin Woodman, and the Scarecrow in The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. They usually have traits that help solve a unique challenge on the quest. And of course, you have best friends or partners too, like Dr. John Watson for Sherlock Holmes. The amount of detail and backstory you develop for these other characters will vary based on how important they are to your story, but it's still good to make your characters as vibrant and developed as you can so you can avoid the dreaded cardboard character comparison, which basically means that they're flat and simple rather than three-dimensional and realistic. Also remember that even though we know these characters are only part of the main character's journey, they don't know that. Every one of us is living our own story and we see the world through our own eyes. Any character you create is going to think the same way about themselves and believe that they are the main character of the story. This is a great time to switch to details. So let's talk about all the things that make your characters into individuals, their mind, body, and soul. How do we do that? By playing. Creating characters is playing with our imagination, mixing and matching nitty gritty details together to create someone new and exciting. That's why character creation is such a big part of role playing games, be they tabletop games with dice or video games. We're gonna spend a lot of time with these characters we want them to have the traits and abilities and accessories and style that works for them and for us. So let's talk about how we do that for characters in our stories, starting with the protagonist. We begin with the problem that our character is going to face. Wait, what? Shouldn't we be focusing on the character themselves? We will, I promise. But first, we want to also think about what the story is going to be about. I'll give you an example. In a mystery story, a crime gets committed 
and it's up to the detective to solve it. If you want to create your own Sherlock Holmes, you need to have an idea of what your detective will be facing so that you can determine what will make your detective the right person to solve that case. Are they super observant like Sherlock, noticing details that others would miss? Or are they a different kind of detective, a friendly person who gets their clues by chatting with everyone around them, making them feel comfortable so that those other characters share details without even realizing it? The setting of your story is also going to impact your character too. Your main character can't be a master of video games. Video games haven't been invented yet at the time of your story. And remember, video games today are very different than the video games from 30 or 40 years ago. Okay, let's take a look at some of the ways I crafted a protagonist for a story I've spoken about in other videos. I was working on a classic style Christmas story about how you don't need magic to make friends. And my main character is a kid who believes in magic and who has trouble making friends. So why might that be? For my story, I decided it was because he was really shy. He also had a really big imagination and liked to tell stories, and the kids at school thought he was a little strange. This made him feel self-conscious, so he didn't really try to talk to other people. He was afraid of getting rejected. I also decided to have him go to a smaller private school so there were fewer kids there to make friends with. These are great details because they help us to understand the character and what motivates them. You may have seen funny clips online of a dramatic actor wanting to understand what their motivation is for scene. Why would the character do this? That's the type of thing we can figure out if we know what the story is about and what the problem is that the main character is going to face. But motivation is important for your secondary characters too. The cowardly lion wants courage. The tin woodman wants a heart. The scarecrow wants a brain. Your villains and antagonists have wants too. Don't forget about the Wicked Witch who wants revenge for what happened to her sister. Knowing the hopes and dreams of all your characters can help to make them feel more real. Knowing a character's age in the story does too, because it helps you to identify common things that the character might go through. For example, we go to different types of schools based on how old we are. Certain life events, like working full-time, getting married, and having children, don't happen until we're adults. Retirement doesn't typically happen until we're much older adults. Different phases of our lives have different common experiences and events, which help to define our characters too. So what else do we need? You may have noticed I haven't talked at all about physical features yet, which may have you wondering, isn't that the first thing you'd notice if you'd met a character? Yep, go ahead and describe your character as you need to. How tall are they? What color are their eyes? If it helps, create a character checklist like you might have in a game to keep track of a character's personality traits, abilities, and physical details. This can be a really useful tool when you're working on long projects because you can look at it while you're writing and make sure you are consistent and don't accidentally change a detail during the story. For example, you don't want your character to start with blue eyes at the beginning of the story and end up with green ones later unless maybe magic is involved or your character is wearing colored contacts. Another thing to consider is how your characters sound. I don't mean whether their voice is high or low or raspy or smooth, though those could be great background details too. I mean, think about if there are words that your characters say a lot, like a catchphrase or a way of speaking that makes them stand out from other characters. In my Christmas story, I have a secondary character who's an elf that works for Santa. I decided it would be funny if he had a potty mouth, but Santa wouldn't approve, so the elf uses regular words instead to replace the swears, and he uses a lot of them. The elf stays off the naughty list, but it makes the character stand out too, because no one else in the story talks that way. People from different regions also have different sayings or different ways to describe the same things. I grew up in a part of New England where we use bubbla as the name for what you might call a water fountain or a drinking fountain. Traffic circles are often called different names too, depending on where you live, like rotary or roundabout. Different generations of people also have different phrases that they use, so that's another way to set characters apart. Words like awesome and fly were used when I was growing up. Hip and square were used in generations before, 
and now words like cringe and sus are being used by younger generations. All these elements can help us to bring our characters to life in a way that makes them feel more real, especially to readers who may be from similar places or be of similar ages to our characters. Speaking of making characters feel real, let's shift to backstory. Although your story begins at a specific point in time, your character has already had many life experiences that have shaped them into the person they are at the time of your story. There are things they'll be afraid of because of bad experiences. There'll be things that they love because of good experiences. They have history, just like we do. And we can make our characters seem more well-rounded by knowing about the events in their lives. Think of a character like Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. That was a man who had some history. In fact, a lot of the story is about how Ebenezer lived his life prior to the story starting and what the consequences of his choices are. Backstories are also great for creating flashbacks. Those are scenes that happened in the past. And even though the event takes place before the story, it's information that's important to what's going on in the present of the story. The Ghost of Christmas Past does exactly that for Ebenezer Scrooge, showing him moments from his past where he made bad choices and how it turned him into the man who needs to change his ways. And even if you don't add scenes with a character's backstory into your story itself, it can be really helpful to you as the author to know what your characters have been through. It helps you to know how they might react to the challenges that they're going to face, which helps readers relate to them more as well. Okay, I think it's time for you to create some characters. And as you do, keep these things in mind. One, their role in the story. Two, all the details that make them individuals, mind, body, and soul. And three, their backstory. Together, you can use these elements to create well-rounded characters that come to life for your readers, become unforgettable friends your readers will want to spend more time with again and again. That's it for me this time around. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also turn on notifications if you'd like to be alerted when new videos come out. Until next time, happy writing.